Number 10, Gwen Vereen. Gwen Vereen is an alternate version we've really only seen briefly in Secret Wars Battle World issue number three, but I like to imagine that she is pretty strong and also pretty cool, like many of her other amalgamated versions. Gwen is a character that we've seen become an alternate version of Spider Man and Deadpool, and both of those characters and versions of Gwen Stacy are pretty rad, I must admit. So I imagine her Wolverine version would also be tough as nails and fierce. Gwen Vereen also appeared on an alternate cover for Old Man Logan issue number two from 2015. With art done by Chris Samney. If that art is any indication, like her other alternate versions before her, this would probably prove to be a pretty powerful and popular alternate version of Wolverine and Gwen. If, you know, we saw more stuff from her. I just want to read a comic that's about all the awesome and powerful alternate Gwen versions running around in the multiverse together. Gwen Stacy's Adventure Through the Multiverse, it could be called, and Gwen could wander around and meet all the alternate, possibly mutant, versions of herself. Maybe Maybe they're all secretly mutants. That would be kind of cool. Just like how Deadpool or Gwenpool was secretly a mutant, maybe, or retconned herself to be a mutant. I love that. It's so weird. Number nine, Poison Wolverine. Poison Wolverine is the assimilated version of Wolverine from Earth 22186, who became bonded to a poison. Poisons are basically like symbiotes, except symbiotes are kind of their own thing over at Marvel, so. I guess imagine a symbiote, but it's like a different symbiotic alien race. So not a symbiote. And, and kind of pointy and sharpie instead. Are you with me at all? The poison that bonded to Wolverine and took him over would have his powers and would also be able to use his biomass to shapeshift and give itself extra appendages or tentacles as needed. So this is a version of Wolverine who isn't in control as much, but does still have powers plus can also shapeshift. Sadly, this version of the character did perish, not because it was defeated per se, but because the head of its hive, the Poison Queen, was vanquished. That's how it works for the poisons. Your queen is vanquished, you're dead. Number eight, Wolverham. Although he might not seem that powerful, Wolverham of reality 73174 might actually end up being one of the most powerful? He is like an alternate version of both Spider-Ham, Peter Porker, and of Wolverine. Being that he's also kind of cartoony in Origins, it's likely that his powers are similar to that of both heroes, meaning that he has probably a crazy healing factor, his adamantium claws and skeleton, and can pull up all sorts of immensely powerful cartoon antics, with cartoon physics applying to his fights and his adventures. I don't know about you, but I think having cartoon physics in play makes you pretty powerful. Cartoon physics are wacky. At number seven, we have Logan from Earth 1051. One, 1,000, 10,511. Another iteration of Weapon X, this version of Wolverine appears in Wolverine Weapon X issue number 12 for just a brief moment. But in the short time that he appears, we get a glimpse into a whole new world where Wolverine has lost both his hands, replacing one of them with a hook. During a major battle in a distant future, he comes in to support his team with a big black beard and overgrown hair and a costume that is seems entirely upgraded. He's got metal shoulder and chest pads with a utility belt and he seems like, well, seems like he's been through a lot. He fights against Roxxon to take back the government but is eventually, spoiler alert, killed by Deathlock. At number 6 we have James Howlett from Earth 96099. Only appearing very briefly, this future version of the hero is totally missing his arm after his battles with the Hulks, which seems like a theme, this whole no arm thing. But anyway, this time he's also totally bald as well. He decides to recruit a new X-Men team with a new race of mutants that he encounters in his future timeline. His goal is to rebuild Baltimore of all places after it is destroyed along with much of civilization after a major war, but he also has to protect the world from an army of mindless hulks who continue to act as the main threat in this storyline. Number five, Zombie Wolverine. We're just a day out from another episode of What If on Disney Plus and we're all so excited and I'll be honest, a little bit nervous because those zombie Avengers are still super powered and they're still on the way. Zombie Wolverine first appeared in Ultimate Fantastic Four issue 22. Now at the Xavier Institute, Wolverine and the X-Men were taken on a zombified Alpha Flight when Magneto came in to save the day. He was part of the crew that went to fight off the remaining horde, but I did introduce him as Zombie Wolverine, so yes, he was sadly infected. Wolverine was bitten by Zombie Hawkeye and Zombie Cap, and after he turned into one himself, he defeated and then ate the Silver Surfer. An afternoon snack quickly gave Wolverine cosmic powers, quite the upgrade. 
It's a gory good time. If we had X-Men in the MCU right now, the zombie episodes would have been so much better, but we can't complain, it's still good stuff. Wolverine is a main character in the Marvel Zombies Dead Days and a minor antagonist in Marvel Zombies vs. Army of Darkness. If you haven't read either, I recommend you read both of them. Read all the zombie comics. I shouldn't have to sell you on how cool zombie superhero comics are. You know, number four, Mr. Murder Hands. There's a nickname, a rather fitting one, really. Logan from Earth-65 first appeared in Spider-Gwen Volume 2, Issue 20. He was a former Japanese samurai who was cursed by a witch. The curse was that you have to live on Earth for all the days that his targets, the people that he killed, would have. So he's going to see quite a few days, basically. His memory here is also erased, and it happens right after he joins the Weapon X program, where he's also given his trademark adamantium claws. When he later joins S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Black Ops team, his fellow operatives give him the nickname of Mr. Murder Hands. Nice. Oh, this is your teammate, Edward Murder Hands. Yeah, make sure you sign in. Great. Break a like, team. Number three, Primal Wolverine. A side we don't get to see too often is Logan's animalistic side. Although maybe it's for the best. We don't want to see that. We don't want any of that smoke, really. Coming from the Mutant Next series back in 1998, we pick up with Wolverine, Sabretooth, and Wild Child, but this time around they're referred to as the Pack. Now in this story, Logan still goes crazy after Weapon X does their thing, but this time he's not alone. Sabretooth and Wild Child also endure these crazy experiments, each of them also going primal in the end. Now the three of them end up roaming the Canadian wilderness like an actual pack. But this pack is one you want to avoid. They end up going nuts by the end of the comic, like I said, but while they're in the wild, they did see other mutants and in turn they all work together for a hot moment to figure out what was happening in Weapon X. They have the right idea, but those animalistic impulses are just too powerful. Messy. Number two, Old Man Logan. Mark Miller's Old Man Logan begins in volume three of Wolverine on issue 66, and this is a future where supervillains have sadly one for the most part. Hulk and She-Hulk had kids, the Hulklings, who would beat the crap out of you if you didn't pay rent. So yeah, it's an odd future to say the least. Everybody has their own territory, so Logan now has to pay up for living in his. Hawkeye, who was much older and this time around he was blind, needed Logan's assistance to get across the country and deliver a secret package. This was a way Logan could get some of that rent money, so let's do it. Just talking about Logan paying rent money is a weird thing. When they get back from their trip, things have changed drastically. Now Hulk gang actually took out Logan's family because, you know, they were bored. And that's what people do when they're bored in this dark future. No more games, no more talking. Now it's time for Logan just to get payback. Simple as that. Alternate reality, same temper. Logan gets Banner, he gets him right through the chest, so naturally he hulks out. And then when Hulk eats Logan, you think that would for sure be the end of it, but that's when Logan pops out from inside Banner. Surprise, we're gonna throw up. And finally, number one. Old Man Venom. Coming from Edge of Venomverse issue 4, we see Logan get captured by Angel, who is Archangel in disguise, and Hulk Jr. This story played out differently than the Old Man Logan storyline because this Wolverine told Bruce Banner Jr. what happened to his father. Archangel took Logan to the danger room of the X-Mansion and that's where he and Bruce Jr. just ambushed him. Wasn't very happy this time around, although the first one wasn't really happy in any way, I guess, either. Bruce Jr. had this idea that maybe if he kills Logan, he can then use his DNA and create symbiote hybrid clones, but what ended up happening was Logan fought a Venomsaurus Rex, that same T-Rex from the original Old Man Logan storyline. The same one we see chasing Hawkeye and Logan. So he fought it, got eaten by it, and then considering the fact that Logan was eaten by the Hulk and ripped his way out, we already know that this is going to be much better. He comes out better than ever. The symbiote ends up bonding with Logan in the T-Rex tummy, giving us a pretty exciting extreme upgrade. He rips his way through the dinosaur and subsequently rips his way through his enemies. Number 10, Rancor. Rancor is the descendant of Wolverine who hails from the Earth of 691. She first appeared in the original Guardians of the Galaxy series in issue number 8. When she was just a teenager, she battled her own father and defeated him by clawing out his heart. Yikes. She then took over the planet Haven and decided to take prisoner the human body population of that planet, turning them into her servants against their will. She would cross paths and play villain to the original Guardians of the Galaxy team initially, but they would end up defeating her, this time around at least. Her powers are similar to Wolverine's, being that she is his descendant. As a ruler, she also has other warriors at hand who are willing to fight for her, although she herself is also a capable and skilled 
fighter. Number 9. Albert Albert was an android created to destroy the real Wolverine by Donald Pierce. He came from a kind of wacky time in comics and also worked with LCD, another android who resembled a little girl. Like I said, it was an interesting and strange time. In the end, both LCD and Albert would go rogue, deciding not to complete their mission as they developed their own free will and thought and decided that eh, they didn't want to die. In killing Wolverine, they likely would have been forced to self destruct, which they just were not into. Albert the android has powers very similar to Wolverine, though he doesn't self heal. But hey, he's an android, so he can be rebuilt or patched up in most cases if he's harmed. He also has the fighting prowess to almost match Wolverine of 616. Almost. And also possesses a genius level intellect. Supposedly. Number 8. Wolverine Earth 811 the Wolverine of Earth 811 is interesting as it has been implied that his powers, while similar to the version of Wolverine from Earth 616, could have actually just been a result of human evolution, with him potentially being a descendant of a small group of ancestors known as the Moon Clan, who hid when the Celestials first arrived at Earth, avoiding any of their genetic experimentation. Despite these potential origins, Wolverine was still considered a mutant when the Sentinels took over as he hails from the reality of Earth 811. And of course, Earth 811 is the reality of the days of future past. He was the Wolverine to help Magneto rescue Scarlet Witch, but unfortunately she died during that attempt and Magneto ended up paralyzed from the waist down. Wolverine would go on to join the resistance and become a leader among them. So he not only brings with him his own abilities, but influence over the resistant forces located on his earth in his reality. Number 7. Jimmy Hudson Jimmy is the son of Wolverine from the Ultimate Universe of Earth 1610, though Jimmy wouldn't know he was Wolverine's son until his mutant powers manifested. His powers are similar to his dad's, but Jimmy is also bonded to one of the poisons, a kind of symbiotic alien creature that typically takes over their hosts. However, after their leader died, Jimmy found a way to control his poison. While bonded to his poison, Jimmy also has spider-like abilities and can shapeshift, turning his claws into tensile, goo-like tendrils or extremely elongated spikes. Whatever he prefers for the day. Number 6. X24 X24 was a clone of Logan made to defeat the old man version of him and recapture the clones who had escaped. He was powerful enough to take on both old man Logan and Laura Kinney at the same time. And Logan pretty much dies trying to fight him in the end, and X24 is even then only killed after X23 is forced to shoot him with an adamantium bullet that Wolverine was actually saving for himself to end his own life. X24 is one tough dude in this movie. He is a version of Logan whose rage is more tapped into and unleashed. What's more, he was engineered to be comparable to Logan in terms of his power level, but in peak physical condition. Considered to be like Wolverine, but as he was in his prime. At number 5 we have Dark Claw. This is a fun one, but it's also arguably a very underestimated Wolverine variant, all things considered. For those of you who don't know Darkclaw, he's basically a combination between Wolverine and Batman. The amalgam comics show different heroes from the Marvel Universe merging with those of the DC Universe, and the result of Wolverine and Batman coming together is a pretty powerful new hero. There's not much more to report than the obvious, which is just that Wolverine and Batman's abilities are combined. But if you really think about it, there's only power gain for Wolverine in this amalgamation. With all the power that Wolverine already has, met with the innovative genius mind of Bruce Wayne, the possibilities for this variant are basically endless. At number 4 we have General James Howlett from Earth 12025. Appearing mostly in Volume 2 of Extreme X-Men, this highly decorated hero is known to be the most powerful in this reality. This version of Wolverine's bones are actually coated in adamantine, which is a mystical metal that comes from the ancient ancient Greek gods of Olympus. The metal keeps him immune from telepathy and it's also known to be more powerful than adamantium. Adamantine, adamantium. They're different. Adamantium, of course, being the one that the original Wolverine relies on. The adamantine is so strong that it even keeps Wolverine safe from attacks from Thor's hammer. Plus, this guy has some pretty cool titles attached to his name and is an explorer working for the government of Canada. So he just seems like a cool dude on top of everything else. Did I say dude? I meant God. He's basically a god. At number 3 is Old Man Phoenix. First appearing in Marvel Legacy number 1, this version of Wolverine is, as you could imagine by the name, Old Man Logan possessing the Phoenix Force. Hailing from Earth 14412, this version of Logan basically mirrors that of 616 Logan, 
up until King Loki wipes out humankind. Logan is known to be dead under unknown circumstances, but is soon chosen to become the new host for the Phoenix Force and travels the universe destroying celestial bodies on his way. When he eventually encounters a future version of Loki, he goes back in time to undo the damage that Loki had done letting go of the Phoenix Force in the process. And this is a request by Loki himself, after seeing something that changes his intentions for supreme power on a dime. This version of Wolverine is definitely the most powerful on the list, both in influence and sheer power. And he looks pretty badass as well. Like an old, angry wizard. Fire wizard. At number two, we have Old Man Logan. Just good old Old Man Logan. Everyone knows this one. I wanted to put him higher on the list than his Phoenix Force counterpart because even though the previous entry is more powerful, Old Man Logan is just more iconic. Old Man Logan first appears in Fantastic Four number 558, but is most well known for his own self-titled series. In this future, Logan has a family, but is in constant fear for his life as most of the world is ruled by supervillains. Most superheroes are dead this far into the future and with his family on the line, he becomes a driven father and husband, packing a punch even more powerful now that it's driven by love and the fear that comes with it. After he raises enough money to protect his family from the Hulk gang, which is a thing in the future I guess, the gang kills his family anyway, leaving old man Logan with only one choice to kill the original Hulk then and there. He is then integrated into the mainstream Marvel Universe after the events of Secret Wars. At number one, we have the Days of Future Past Wolverine, or Wolverine from Earth 811. On Earth 811, this version of Wolverine lives in a time 33 years ahead of the modern 616 version. And when the Watcher from Earth 9997 looks into Logan's past, he unveils that Logan's past isn't quite as it seemed. Instead of being born sometime in the 1800s and tested on in a lab, X-51 finds that he had actually descended from a tribe of humans known as the Moon People. In this future storyline, he's faced with the task of protecting the mutant race after the Mutant Control Act is put into effect and Sentinels are ordered as the protectors of America. After a few search and rescue missions, Wolverine joins the resistance and fights with his mutant comrades, including Magneto, to defeat the Sentinels. In this reality, Wolverine has all the same powers as the 616 version, but he does have access to the Watcher's transportation devices as well on Earth's moon, which could transport him anywhere on Earth instantly. At number 10 is Feral Wolverine. This version of the hero is not given added power by any upgrades or magical augmentation, but by his own sheer will to cause harm. What happens is that Wolverine's adamantium is ripped out by Magneto through the pores of his skin, which is, of course, very painful and traumatic. So he gets extremely angry and loses all control as he's thrown into a blind rage to get revenge on Magneto. But aside from Wolverine's pain-driven fury, Magneto Magneto actually activates a new mutation that he didn't know was being held back by the adamantium in Wolverine. And this mutation basically turns him into an animalistic version of himself that is closer to an untamed beast than his usual strategic and tactically aware self. The only downside of this version of Wolverine is that he's so unhinged that he's not able to control any strategic approach to battle. At number 9 is Helverine. When the red right hand sets their sights on Wolverine, acting on their strange grudge against him, specifically, they banish Logan's soul and replace it with that of a demon. So, a demonic version of Wolverine is created and makes the superhero even more powerful, sending him into a demonic rage, killing many of Logan's friends in one bloody frenzy. It takes a lot of effort for the X-Men to finally subdue Helverine, requiring the whole team alongside Jean Grey, as well as Logan's own soul, to battle the demon out of Wolverine's body for good. This version of Wolverine shows how strong it is in a very short time, leaving Logan's friends and us readers alike, hoping that the red right hand will finally just leave Logan alone. At number 8 is Laura Kinney. Laura Kinney is the result of a top secret program that makes an effort to create another Wolverine. But when they can't find a subject to survive the process of bonding the adamantium to their bones, they decide to just clone Logan himself. But during this process, the Y chromosome is damaged and they instead create a female clone that they call X-23. She only has the two claws on either hand, but that typically isn't a hindrance for her since she does get empowered by 
by the Enigma Force a number of times. And if you're not already aware, the Enigma Force is what gives Captain Universe his power. So Laura is really not to be messed with. She's also just a great fighter on her own and she eventually escapes the lab and becomes a very successful hero by her own right. At number 7 is Lord of Vampires Wolverine. In What If number 24, Wolverine is bitten by Lord Dracula which turns him into a vampire. And after some biting and killing as a blood sucking ghoul, Wolverine decides he has to kill Lord Dracula and become the Lord of the Vampires himself. Then Wolverine goes and kills most of the X-Men, turning a few of them into vampires as well and then controlling them and others with hypnosis. With his vampire army, he goes forth to take on all of New York City and then eventually the world. It's a fun, quick issue that explores an interesting question in a what if context, but if you really take the character seriously and consider his powers, Lord of Vampires Wolverine is a very powerful variant. Wolverine is already an extremely powerful superhero, but with the ability to turn others into mindless vampires and then control them with mind powers, he becomes nearly unstoppable. At number 6 we have Zombie Wolverine. This variant is on its own maybe not the most powerful out of them all considering he's made up of decaying flesh. But due to circumstance, he actually ends up being a real issue for his friends and enemies alike. During a fight against the Silver Surfer, this version of Wolverine loses his right arm and actually has it replaced by a cybernetic one. Not only that, but Zombie Wolverine also gains cosmic powers after killing and then devouring the corpse of the Silver Surfer. So aside from an insatiable hunger as a driving force for this variant, he's also got the whole cosmic power thing on his side, as well as a nifty cybernetic arm. Beware of zombie Wolverine. He means business. Number 5. Wolverina Wolverina is the female version of Wolverine and cousin of Wolvie or Wolverine from the alternate earth of 89923. She works as a waitress at her father's bar, Bud Sud, but is also a skilled fighter who is called in to replace Wolverine after he went missing. Wolverina also has leadership skills and could potentially make a good team leader if needed. More than that, while her powers are somewhat unspecified when it comes to what they are, how powerful they can be considered, Wolverina also is a self-aware comic book character, meaning that she knows she is in a comic book and can often use this knowledge to take charge of her own narrative and break the fourth wall with, reaching out to her readers. I think having that kind of power can be pretty potent in comics, which is why she makes the cut for our most powerful part 2 list. And she didn't do too bad, she's about halfway up. so. Pretty impressive. Number 4, Weapon X. Weapon X comes to us from the Age of Apocalypse universe of Earth 295. Weapon X has powers similar to his Earth 616 counterpart, but his feral rages are more intense in comparison, and he initially requires Jean's assistance to calm those rages down, which was what brought the two together romantically. It would be in a fight with Cyclops when he made his way to try and save Jean Grey from Sinister that he'd lose his hand, while also taking one of Cyclops' eyes in exchange during the the battle. A hand for an eye, an eye for a hand. That seems that seems pretty fair, I guess. Weapon X would later go on, despite being maimed, to become even more powerful, possibly one of the most powerful alternate versions of the character, when he surprised everyone and ended up becoming Apocalypse's heir after his defeat and the return of the Celestials. During this time, he was known as Weapon Omega, though his newfound power would only end up being temporary. Eventually, he would have this power stripped from him by Jean and return once more to being Weapon X. Also, I think I cut off this hand, but I think it's actually this hand I think that he loses. I'm trying to remember the art. I always want to mirror everything, so that's why. I don't even know if it'll be the same for you though, because this might be mirrored for you. I, I don't know. I don't know. How do you see it? Isn't camera, aren't cameras weird in the way that we see images? Isn't that all weird when you think about it? Anyways, the fact that we see images and we flip them with our eyes and it's all freaky. Coming in at number three, we have Hydra Wolverine. Hailing from the reality known as Earth 1720, this version of Wolverine is fully committed to the evil ideology of the organization Hydra, complete with a new green and yellow color scheme to his costume. Married to this universe's version of the Invisible Woman, who also happens to be this universe's version of Madame Hydra, this Wolverine was apparently successful in conquering his home reality along with his lover and has since begun to track 
travel the multiverse searching for more worlds to destroy in the universe's most twisted romantic honeymoon. Luckily for the Marvel multiverse, this Wolverine would be defeated by a variant of Kitty Pride and the rest of the Exiles who wound up tricking him into stabbing himself with his own adamantium claws. Better luck next time, Hydra. Coming in at number two, we have the Wolverine from the Age of Apocalypse universe. In an alternate world where Charles Xavier is dead and Magneto is leader of the X-Men, Wolverine is a brutal warrior named Weapon X who has to be constantly subdued by the psychic abilities of Jean Grey in order to be a functioning member of the X-Men team. Eventually losing a hand while going on a suicide mission to rescue this version of Jean from a version of Cyclops, this version of Wolverine for a time had heroic ambitions but gave them up after being granted the power of the Celestials and turned into Weapon Omega, now determined to bring about the evolutionary future that he'd initially stopped the mutant apocalypse from achieving and declaring war against all of humanity. This new Weapon Omega is the farthest thing possible from Wolverine's usual heroics. And finally, coming in at our top spot, we have Brother Mutant, an evil variant of Wolverine combined with some of his greatest allies and greatest foes. On Earth-127, a male variant of the Scarlet Witch, known as the Scarlet Warlock, attempted to cast a spell that would transfer Wolverine's adamantium skeleton to Magneto, thus giving Magneto an incredible power boost given his magnetic abilities. However, something with the spell went wrong, and the Scarlet Warlock, Wolverine, Magneto, Quicksilver, and the villain Mesmero were all merged into a singular being known as Brother Mutant. All five of these mutants' powers combined into one villainous figure, Brother Mutant was such a powerful threat that a multiversal team of other, more heroic Wolverines had to be assembled specifically to stop him just to ensure that all of that power wasn't unleashed on the rest of the Marvel Multiverse. Kicking off the list at number 10, Dark Claw. Coming from the Amalgam Universe, where DC and Marvel combine powers figuratively and literally, we get a Wolverine-Batman double whammy. First appearing in Legends of the Dark Claw issue 1 back in 1996, at just age 5, young Logan Wayne witnessed the death of his parents, so now we have that Batman origin right off the bat to lay the foundation. Good stuff, always promising. And then Logan Wayne was sent to live with his uncle in Canada. But after poachers ambushed his home, we have even more family members biting the bullet. So far, so sad. Okay, so Logan Wayne enlisted then in the Royal Canadian Air Force and soon after the Weapon X program. This is all starting to sound a bit familiar, I bet. That's when the Wolverine origin comes in. Logan Wayne got the adamantium treatment, but it was a failure. In a way, kind of. Because Logan wasn't this mindless brute like he was in the comics. See, now he kept his sanity. So now we're starting to get more of a positive vibe, which is good for a good start of this list. Afterwards, he was a free man, so he studied criminology, forensics, gymnastics, martial arts, anything he could get his hands on, including the 127 major styles of combat. That mixed with the claws, Logan Wayne is somebody I'd never want to cross paths with, either as Batman or just Wolverine. Either way, I'm like, no, you guys are both gonna kill me. And before we continue on with this list, if you wanna go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, support our man Wolverine, he is Canadian, we are Canadian, only makes sense, really hit those thumbs up, you guys are the best, let's get back to the list. Number nine, Wild Thing. For this one, we go over to the MC2 universe where Elektra married Wolverine and soon after came a child, of course. That daughter was named Rena Logan, and if that name doesn't ring a bell, she's also called Wild Thing. Marvel's MC2 imprint quickly gained momentum after What If, issue 105, which introduced us to a universe full of other super kids. Wild Thing's powers are very similar to her father's, obviously. I mean, even just by looking at her, you could probably make a guess who she's an offspring of. All that aggression, you're like, okay, it's definitely Wolverine. She also possesses the power of regenerative healing and super strength, but what makes her stand out really is the psychic claws. Instead of adamantium claws, she has minor psionic abilities that allow her to manifest her own claws, but if she focuses hard enough, if she really thinks, she can have claws, real life claws, like her father, and dish out physical damage too. Mental, physical, she's got you beat in both realms. Number eight, Hydra Wolverine. Hearing Cap say Hail Hydra in Endgame was a wild moment to witness in theaters. Steve using future knowledge to save the day instead of kicking everybody's ass in the elevator whilst tipping his hat to comic book fans, it was a nice moment, beautifully written in. In Exiles issue 92, we get to see Logan turn sides briefly as well. In this reality, Wolverine is a Hydra agent and the Invisible Woman is Madame Hydra. And to make things even more strange, they're both 
lovers. Yeah, this is this odd couple here alongside Slay Master left their reality after fighting the Exiles and they tried to conquer the multiverse. Hydra Wolvi wasn't around too long for he was actually brutally taken out by the cat with his own claws in New Exiles issue 12. Number seven. Earth X. James Howlett from Earth 9997. And here he's actually not a mutant, he's pure human. We learned that Wolverine's ancestors were actually a group of early humans known as the Moon Clan. What happened was when the first celestial host arrived, it blocked out the moon. And the moon, to the Moon Clan, I mean, they worshipped the thing. So when it disappeared, so did they. They ducked out in a cave, they weren't sure what was going on, but they wanted no part of it. They were one of the few links of humanity that weren't manipulated by the celestials. So Logan's natural DNA was now able to evolve, growing into his abilities like enhanced senses, bone claws, healing factors, all the good stuff. So when Charles recruited him into the X-Men, he might have been aware that Logan isn't truly a mutant. So next time there's a lunar eclipse, I'm gonna go hide in a cave somewhere up north. You know, just to see what happens. Number six, days of future past. In the Age of Ultron comic, we see again a dark future where the Avengers are getting whooped. Ultron is using Vision as a conduit from the future, like the world's most painful game of telephone, and the Avengers don't really see a way to get Ultron to stop, so they send Sue Storm and Logan back in time to find a solution. Now, Logan's solution was to just straight up kill Hank Pym to make sure Ultron isn't created. But in doing so, this opened a dark alternate future, so when they go back to this new timeline they've created, the Kree Skrull War has now moved to Earth and they run into the defenders of that timeline and also Logan of that timeline. That's a lot of Logans in one story, but is there ever enough? Really? No. Never. Number five, Old Man Logan. Definitely one of the scariest alternate versions of Wolverine out there when it comes to the reality in which he resides. Old Man Logan hails from the alternate reality of Earth 807128. In this reality, it was Wolverine himself who was responsible for the death of the X Men as he was tricked by Mysterio into slaughtering all of them when the villains took over and ended up finally winning the day. Flash forward to the future where Wolverine is old and he doesn't go by that code name anymore because. Well, it brings back pretty painful memories, which he still is haunted by to this day. Instead, he's simply known as Logan. But even though he tries to stay away from heroics, retiring, and even settling down with a wife and kids, he can't seem to escape his vigilante ways. After his family are killed when he is late to pay forced protection money to the Hulk gang, Logan himself seeks revenge, inevitably and gruesomely freeing pretty much everyone from the villainous nature of deranged Pappy Banner and his inbred family. That Hulk gang. Oh boy. Number four, Cancer vs. Wolverine. We don't know that much about Cancer vs. Wolverine, who hails from the Earth of 10011, but we do know, like many others who hail from this reality, Wolverine here is horrifying to behold, and he is part of the X Men, spelt E X Men. In the Cancer verse, death was completely eradicated, which you might think would bring about a sort of paradise in the cosmos, but instead, this change had, well, the opposite effect mutating everything into one big horror show. Turns out death wasn't quite as bad as we all thought, and that life, left unchecked, is actually horrifying. Who would have guessed? Number three, X24. In the film Logan, X24 was an even more deadly clone than X23. This was a clone version of Wolverine, genetically engineered to be as powerful as Wolverine in his prime, perhaps even more so, and who was much more easy to control and manipulate. Not as free thinking, and just more of a straight up berserker. So basically, like Wolverine without any of his moral code at all, or any in inhibitions. This made X24 the perfect weapon to be used against Wolverine himself and escapee Laura, aka X23. It took a lot to take down X24 and his perceived strength and ruthlessness in the film made him a terrifying nemesis to watch. I don't know about you, but I got so anxious every time he showed up on screen in that initial watch through of Logan. Ugh, even, even when I rewatch it now, I'm like, huh, Logan, no, X24 is coming for you, run! Number two, Lord of the Vampires. This alternate version of Wolverine comes to us from the What If series, volume two, issue 24. Here the fate of the world was forever changed when during the X-Men's battle with Dracula, Storm ultimately decided to remain with Dracula. This changed the course of history forever as Wolverine and the other heroes were captured and transformed into vampires themselves. However, Wolverine's willpower proved much too strong for Dracula to tame or control. And so he was challenged and later defeated by Wolverine who then became the new Lord of the Vampires. What's scarier than a Terminator style clone version of Wolverine? How about a vampire version of Wolverine who rules over all of the other vampires and can turn anyone into his loyal thrall? Number one, Zombieverse Wolverine. Actually, I feel a little bad that I put the zombies above the vampires in this list, but 
here we are. I don't know how, but I almost actually forgot to mention Zombie vs. Wolverine on this list. I guess maybe it's just because I'm so fixated on vampires, which I guess makes sense. But it's really shocking considering how emotionally scarring and overall how terrifying I find the zombie verse in Marvel to be. It's just, just a real horror show over there. Over on Earth Z or Earth 2149, Wolverine isn't just any old zombie either, but becomes one of the zombie cosmic or zombie galacti after he and a group of chosen few fight over and successfully devour Galactus's remains. For a long time, this granted zombie Wolverine the power cosmic, so not only was he now a terrifying member of the undead with Wolverine's killer instincts and fighting prowess, but then he also had the power cosmic on top of that. Wow. At number 10, we have Weapon X Wolverine. First appearing in X-Men Alpha number 1, this version of Wolverine is missing one hand and fights in a Magneto-led version of the X-Men. It's hard to imagine Logan being even more grizzled than we're used used to, but with face paint and a ton of built up resentment about the whole missing hand situation, this version of the hero shows what age can do to a person, especially when you're creeping towards the ripe age of 300. Known as Weapon X in this future reality, this Wolverine soon becomes known as Weapon Omega, and to be fair, his anger isn't the only thing driving him to be more vicious than ever. This version of Wolverine is augmented by the Celestials and can only eventually be stopped by Jean Grey. At number 9 we have Counter Earth Hawkeye. This could be contested whether or not he's from the future or just an alternate reality, but time is kind of hard to follow sometimes when dealing with interdimensional travel. So I'll leave this one up for debate. Regardless, it's a pretty unique version of Wolverine that I thought was worth mentioning. Franklin Richards writes a new version of Hawkeye in Onslaught Reborn number 1 who appears to be a different iteration than the one we're used to. And that's because behind the mask is actually Wolverine and not Clint Barton. On Counter Earth, this version of Wolverine is part of the Avengers and it seems to me that this alternate dimension is further along in its own timeline allowing for Wolverine to possess some kind of magical ability brought on by Blastar the Living Bomb Burst. At number 8 is Phalanx Wolverine from the newer comic series X Deaths of Wolverine, released between January and March of 2022. This version of Wolverine travels into the future to save a being who is very very important to the mutant race. And as he travels through time, he starts to envision memories from his past. Memories that he hadn't ever before been able to recall. One of the more significant of these lost memories is one where he was present during the birth of Charles Xavier, saving his family from Omega Red. This storyline uses a future version of Wolverine to remind us that this hero, being the most published in the history of Marvel Comics, has so much history that there is still new lore to be uncovered even in 2022. Number 7, Old Man Logan. Old Man Logan is still a badass who manages to get a lot done despite the fact that his healing factor sometimes struggles to keep up. In his old age, his healing factor is slowed down when we first get into Logan's future adventures in the post-apocalyptic wasteland that was once Earth. However, much more later down the line, his healing factor finally picks back up again. At this time, Logan no longer goes by the name Wolverine at all and is instead known as the Hooded Man. So this version of him is kind of weaker, but also kind of the same. Either way, Old Man Logan also brings years of experience and wisdom to the table, which I think should be worth something extra when it comes to how powerful he is. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more Wolverine lists, or more mutant lists in general, haha, I love writing mutant lists for you, please be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up and clicking subscribe, do all the things, woo! Number 6, Diamond Patch. Diamond Patch is the version of Wolverine from Warp World, which of course was made by Gamora when using the Infinity Stones to fold the universe in half. He is the amalgamation of Emma Frost and Wolverine, making him a pretty deadly and stylish character. His claws, instead of being adamantium, are diamond, and Diamond Patch also has a sharp eye and mind for good business ventures as well, like Emma Frost. He also seems to be able to channel his telepathic powers using his claws as well. It was also implied that in the future, Diamond Patch may potentially be destined to bond with the Phoenix Force. Ho ho! Number 5. The Hooded Man Making his first appearance in Fantastic Four issue 558, the Hooded Man is James Howlett from the year 2509. Now at this point, he had given up the whole Wolverine alias, and now he was calling himself the Hooded Man. Reminds me of Hawkeye when he turned into Ronin in like Endgame. We love hooded people. 
especially Robin Hood, he's OG. Now in this future, he alongside the Fantastic Four have formed the New Defenders. The New Defenders used the body of a deceased Galactus to travel back in time. They transported their dead world to Earth 616, now their new world. Well, it's literally called that, New World and New World. It's an exact replica of Earth. Ted Castle and others created this knowing that our current Earth would be uninhabitable in just a mere 30 years. So the New Defenders settled here with present day Fantastic Four, but eventually Logan, aka the Hooded Man, went back to his own reality to rebuild the population with Gaia. It's gonna be really busy. That's gonna be a busy time. Number four, Helverine. First appearing in Wolverine Volume 4, Helverine was a fierce demon from the underworld, as if his name didn't maybe tip you off already. He first approached a man named Roger who hated Wolverine so much because he actually blamed the death of his wife on Wolverine. The demon then told Roger that if he joined the red right hand, he would help him get revenge. So sounds great, Mr. Demon, thank you so much. And then he disappeared. So he joined the organization and he alongside other right hand members sacrificed a man and a woman in order to get the demon to come back again. The demon returned, took out those two people, and then in turn told Roger it was revenge time. All the while, Wolverine was tricked inside of a van where the founder, leader of the Red Right Hand, performed a ritual to have Helverine take over Wolverine's body. Helverine was then forced to attack all of his close friends, and as dark as this one is, I gotta say, it's one of my favorite versions of Wolverine. Maybe it's the Flaming Claws, maybe it's Maybelline. I don't know. I love him. Number three, the end. In Wolverine The End, we see an aged Wolverine as he embarks to take down the last of the Weapon X program, all the while he's dealing with himself becoming less immortal. This six-parter is a great gloomy time. It opens with Wolverine in the snowy landscapes of Canada, struggling to even hunt a deer. Now it hurts him to retract his claws, you know, super arthritis ain't a joke, and now he has long white hair, and I gotta, I gotta admit, watching him struggle is depressing, but really entertaining. Because in this run, he meets his long lost brother, who has apparently been watching him for a long time, and his brother tries to make it seem like he's going to help him discover the secrets of his past, but really he's just using him to nuke Vegas. So in the end, literally the end of the end, Wolverine is holding his long lost brother's body. It's quite sad, but definitely worth a read. Bring tissues, you'll need them. Number two. James Hudson Jr. Jimmy Hudson, okay, first appeared back in the 2010's Ultimate X issue one, but later on in Ultimate Comics Wolverine issue four, he was the new Wolverine. Okay, who is this guy? So Jimmy Hudson is the son of Wolverine. So back when Logan was fighting in Iraq, he fought alongside a man named James Hudson, and they were pretty close because Logan trusted James enough to take care of his newborn son. Jimmy's last name was changed when the adoption became official, and Jimmy Jr. had no idea that he too was a mutant until his high school days. He took after his birth father even so. I mean, he was attracted to redheads, he was reckless, and of course, he was absolutely shredded. In Venomized, the poison hive invades Earth, and they force symbiotes to bond with various superhumans. When the X-Men helped out, Jimmy was bonded to one himself. And finally, number one. Weapon H. Making his first appearance in Totally Awesome Hulk issue 21, Clayton Cortez was originally a Marine and former Eagle Star contractor whose team was originally hired to go after the villagers of Yuzhanka for sabotaging a Roxxon pipeline. Clay turned against his own men saving lives, but he also put himself in a dark spot. He was captured and sold to Dr. Alba, head of Weapon X Batch H Division, which was this neat division that made Wolverine Hulk hybrids. Gotta love those. H Alpha was unlike the others because he wasn't recruited by Director Stryker, so he wasn't a true believer in his cause, and that Dr. Alba left more of his brain in there than the other subjects in hopes that he would train better. Okay, leave a little bit of brain left, see what happens. Age Alpha had about 15 minutes to go in the incubation process when a group of mutants showed up and raided the place. So Dr. Alba released H Beta to buy time, but when H Alpha was finally done, he beheaded H Beta. And then the Hulk came in, which at the time was Amadeus Cho, and he came in to hold him back. It was just nuts. People were getting their heads cut off, there's Hulk hybrids everywhere. It's really loud, it must be a really loud day. Once the Weapon X staff left, Weapon H stopped fighting and then he jumped far away. Coming in at number 10, we've got a video game honorable mention with the Wolverine symbiote from the game Spider-Man Web of Shadows. In this title storyline, Wolverine has traveled to New York City to deal with a growing symbiote infestation, and even briefly fights Spider-Man when he believes the wall crawler is actually Venom. Unfortunately for Wolverine, he finds himself overwhelmed by actual symbiotes on top of a church and attacks Spider-Man again as the Wolverine symbiote. With all of his usual healing abilities on top of all the symbiote enhancements that the alien parasites offer, this version of Wolverine might just be one of the grossest versions we've ever gotten to see. Coming in at number 9, we have the brainwashed Wolverine of Earth 14850. At one point in the regular Marvel Universe, Wolverine was captured and brainwashed by Hydra in order to assassinate the Avengers.
creatures, but luckily was able to be deprogrammed before he did any real damage. On this alternate Earth, however, the deprogramming never took place, and Wolverine's killing spree of superpowered heroes was able to last for months. Armed with all of his incredible abilities, absolutely no remorse, and the addition of Hydra-developed teleporting technology that nullified even Wolverine's usual weaknesses, and this was a horrifying enemy that even the Avengers couldn't handle. Coming in at number 8, we've got a live-action detour with X-24 from the 2017 film, Logan. An allegedly perfect clone of Wolverine, but with none of the compassion or humanity, X-24 was treated like an attack dog and followed the orders of Xander Rice to hunt down and capture the real Wolverine and the young mutant girl he was protecting. Based on Wolverine during his prime years, he was able to physically overcome the true Wolverine and was only able to be defeated at the last last minute by a bullet made of pure adamantium right to the skull. Coming in at number 7, we have the vicious Vampire Lord Wolverine. In an alternate universe where vampires have launched an all-out assault on the United States, most of the X-Men are bitten and mind-controlled by the Lord of the Vampires, Dracula. Unfortunately for Dracula, however, Wolverine's healing ability allows him to regain his own mental control despite becoming a vampire, and thus is able to overthrow Dracula and become their leader. Consumed by a bloodlust that amplifies his already pretty terrifying rage, Wolverine and his vampire army are able to wipe out most other superpowered life on the planet, only finally being defeated by the combined forces of Doctor Strange and the Punisher as a vampire hunting duo. Coming in at number 6, we have the infamous Zombie Wolverine. Many superheroes and villains of the Marvel Universe found themselves infected with an undead plague on the alternate world of Earth 2149, but Wolverine might be the character who experienced the oddest side effects from becoming a member of the Zombie Legion. Initially fighting alongside Magneto to help defeat the undead threat with the X-Men, Wolverine was eventually bitten and overwhelmed while attempting to defend Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D.'s main base of operations. Turning against Magneto, this version of Wolverine slowly discovered his healing factor was affected by his zombification, meaning his arms could no longer support the adamantium claws throughout his body. Attacking any living thing he could with the shreds that remained of his limbs, this version of Wolverine would go on to even consume Galactus, becoming a cosmic undead threat to the rest of this very doomed Marvel Universe. At number 5 we have the Wolverine from Wolverine The End. This comic series is known to offer the reader a look into how these characters face, well they're ends. And in Wolverine's issues, we face what seems to be an even older and more grim version of an old man Logan. But for Wolverine, we're left with a cliffhanger instead of his death, suggesting that there will be even more future iterations of Logan and or James Howlett to come. In the final issue of this The End series, James faces off against his own older brother, John Howlett Jr. And as they duke it out in front of an audience of military personnel, James ends up accidentally killing his brother, driving his claws through his chest after a fall. After some epic final words are exchanged, we watch James sit in silence as it's suggested that he is apprehended by the authorities. But this isn't confirmed, that's actually where the series ends. This is definitely one of the more gothic and darker versions of Wolverine, and the dark epic storyline that this series explores really reflects how much Wolverine has been through over the years, even into the future. At number 4 we have Ultimate Cable. We all know that Cable is a time traveler and the son of Cyclops and Jean Grey. Well, on Earth 2107 this isn't the case. Instead, James Howlett takes on the mantle of Cable and sports a big scar across his face. This is from a battle taking place in the future where this Wolverine version of Cable or vice versa, fights Apocalypse with the X-Men, and his arm is once again ripped off. When Apocalypse absorbs his healing factor, he uses the severed arm with the claws on it against Cable Wolverine and leaves a massive scar on the face. And since this and the dismemberment come after his healing power is taken away, these wounds remain. Luckily, this version of Wolverine has other abilities like Cable's and eventually finds a way to travel back in time 30 years to collect Professor or X and try and right the wrongs of the future. At number 3 we have Weapon H. So this variant is the result of what happens when you mix together Wolverine and the Hulk into one guy. 
And what you get is a super powered Hulk with an adamantium skeleton and of course the retractable claws. But he still has the ability to switch back to his human form on command despite his frame being coated in the metal. The only downside for this variant that I could think of is the same thing that gives the Hulk a disadvantage. His rage can sometimes be too much for him to handle, keeping him from making sound tactical decisions at times. But regardless, the sheer power that this variant holds is enough, as Dr. Alba theorizes, to kill every living thing on Earth. This is a relatively new character, so I'm interested to see where he goes. I guess we'll all see. At number two, we have Weapon Omega. Aside from just looking pretty cool, Weapon Omega is undoubtedly one of the most powerful variants of Wolverine in any reality. This guy has all the powers of Wolverine with the added abilities of Apocalypse. So yes, he's basically immortal and can teleport. And also use mind control, shift in size on command, and fly. Not to mention the huge blaster that's replaced one of his claw arms. And the crazy armor that he's got equipped at all times as well. Also remember, he's still got his healing abilities, even if someone did get close enough to do any damage on this guy, which I doubt is a very easy feat to accomplish and sort of pointless considering he never dies. Weapon Omega eventually takes over for Apocalypse as leader of the Horsemen, solidifying his position as one of the most powerful variants of Wolverine in his political influence as well. Finally at number one, I'm putting Phoenix Force Wolverine, because there's really no comparing Phoenix Force to any other entity in terms of power, at least as far as Wolverine variants go. When possessed by Phoenix Force, Wolverine has the ability to manipulate matter at will, as well as warping reality and the fabric of the multiverse. Not to mention, if he wanted to, he could do what Dark Phoenix does and gain more power by consuming the energy of stars throughout the cosmos, if he so chooses. It's almost like his adamantium claws don't really act add any extra gusta to his power set at this point, because instead of taking a stab at someone, he could just, you know, think about them being a pile of ashes, and it would happen. He's such a powerful variant that he eventually reigns over the cosmos in a future alternate reality, something that old King Thor observes for himself. So yeah, Phoenix Force Wolverine at number one. Number 10, Dirty Bomb Wolverine. Why does this sound like some sort of sexy nickname for Wolverine? It really is not. Instead, this alternate version of Wolverine is an empty clone that was created in the current Wolverine series and used to basically burn vampires loyal to Dracula from the inside out. This all went down in a battle in the effort of freeing Omega Red from Dracula's hold over him, while also getting back at Drac who was attempting to get his hands on Wolverine so he could use his blood to allow his own vampire army to walk around during the day, making them obviously much more powerful. Omega Red's plan to stop Dracula was to give him what he wanted, which meant making a clone of Wolverine who was gene edited to have blood that was thick with photonic cells, similar to the ones found in Plankton which produced their own luminescence. Basically the blood of the Dirty Bomb clone Wolverine then had the opposite effect on the vamps who consumed it, meaning they would be burnt from the inside out as opposed to being able to walk in the day. Having a gene edited clone of Wolverine is a frightening prospect and a clone who is used simply as a decoy and bomb is pretty morally scary. And then there is the added factor of how it made the vampires feel to learn of it. And I'm sure that they were properly terrified before they were all killed. Minus Dracula of course who got away in the end, like he always does. Although the mutants won the battle in issue number 12 of the current Wolverine series, they did not win the war. Still continues with the vampire nation. Number 9. Dark Claw. If you find the Batman scary, and I mean, who doesn't? He is often drawn with the intention of looking intimidating and scary enough to strike fear into the hearts of goons and villains all across Gotham. Then take a seat because Dark Claw is definitely going to spook you a bit here. Dark Claw comes to us from the Amalgam universe where he was created as a cross between Marvel's Wolverine and DC's Batman, blending together two of the big two's most popular and frightening heroic characters. He's got the backstory and fortune of Batman, but still boasts of the adamantium coated skeleton and healing factor of Wolverine. Meaning that Logan Wayne is not an alternate version that you would want to mess with. And all my ghouls out there, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more Wolverine lists, be sure to let us know by clicking that like button and commenting down below. Also if you click like and if you smash subscribe, you can call me Vampy. Number 8. Phoenix. One of the most terrifying versions of Wolverine in terms of what he could 
could be capable of has to be the Wolverine from the alternate future where Thor ends up as all father and Loki wipes out all of humanity. Just to make his brother suffer, of course. In this dystopian future, Wolverine himself ends up being chosen to become the new host for the Phoenix Force after his own death. Phoenix Logan was obviously capable of many different insane feats due to him being imbued with, well, the Phoenix Force, even managing to save Loki from the Celestials. Pretty impressive. However, Phoenix Wolverine would prove to be not quite as scary when facing a future version of Doom, who obliterated him. But Logan, being imbued with the power of the Phoenix Force, meant that he could resurrect, and in order to ensure that Doom would be defeated this time around, he sacrificed himself to empower all Father Thor's weapon Mjolnir in the continued battle. Also, that would be the one really powerful Mjolnir. It's like Mjolnir with the Phoenix Force. That's crazy. Number seven, Akahiro. Sure. Sure, Dokken is a character all his own, but I also counted a clone that was used as a dirty bomb against vampires, so I feel like if I do that, it would be really insulting if we did not talk about Akihiro. Dokken was an alternate version of Wolverine during Dark Reign, where Norman Osborn basically took over in the comics, where he forged the organization Hammer and there and his very own Dark Avengers. The Dark Avengers were made up of former and current villains repurposed and remarketed as Avengers replacements. Osborn actually tried to recruit some of the original Avengers after after they'd been disbanded, but of course they pretty much all refused. They were like, we know you're Norman Osborn, so. Dokken was recruited to be Dark Wolverine on the team, and while Akihiro might not be quite as villainous in the comics currently, at the time, he was still pretty much one of the baddies. Dokken is a terrifying alternate because he is less of a moral code than his dad, who already isn't known for his light touch when it comes to dealing with his opponents. Dokken, like his father, is also a skilled fighter and assassin who was trained since he was a child to become a killer and a weapon for Romulus to use against Logan. Oh, and if you're not from familiar with him, he also has pretty much all the powers of his dad. His claws are just a little bit different. Actually, Dokken also has pheromone powers, so he's not really more powerful than his dad in terms of skill, but power set. Just saying. Number 6, Wolverine Noir. Jim Logan is one of the noir versions of Wolverine that we see in the Marvel Noirverse. Another shows up in the X-Men Noir series, but with a different backstory and also kind of a different name. He's a bootlegger, but the one we're focusing on here is a detective. Honestly, a lot of the noir versions of heroes are detectives. But back then in the stories, everyone was a detective, so I'm fine with it. Either way, I personally think that narrative fits Wolverine's power set just a little bit better, being a skilled tracker himself. Jim in Wolverine Noir is part of Logan and Logan, a detective agency that boasts that they're the best there is at what we do. The whole look of the series is very creepy, very noir, and it also draws a lot on the backstory of Wolverine given to us in his origin series, where we learn of how he was mistreated as a boy, his relationship to Dog, and his childhood love and friend, Rose. In this version of the story, Logan's father is a very religious preacher who often forces young Jim to sit and listen to his sermons while he rehearses them. Coming in at number five, we have the villainous Wolverine of an alternate future, Saberclaw. Hailing from Earth 982, this son of Wolverine and an unknown woman absolutely hates his original father, so much so that it seems to have literally changed him into appearing more reminiscent of Sabretooth than his actual dad. Wearing adamantium sheaths on his bone claws to make them even deadlier, Saberclaw was briefly a member of this universe's Sinister Six before eventually being convinced to put his differences aside with his father and help defend the world from the threat of Galactus and the daughter of Loki. Just another day in complicated comic book family dynamics. Coming in at number four, we have Dakin, the dark son of Wolverine. Named after the Japanese term for mongrel dog, Dakin is the tragic child that Wolverine never knew about, his mother being murdered before Wolverine even knew he had a kid. Cut from his mother's body, Dakin was raised to hate his father, and in their very first encounter, slashed open his stomach and left him to die. With the same incredible healing abilities and bone claws as his dad, Dakin has had a long road of trying to find his proper place in the world, and has fought on the sides of both good and evil over the course of his tragic life, but hopefully he'll stay more on the side of good going forward. Number three, Earth 10005. This is the Wolverine that belongs to Fox's mutant verse, played by Hugh Jackman. In this reality, Wolverine was one of the strongest mutants around, being the only one that Kitty was able to send back in time in Days of Future Past, and the only one who was able to put a stop to Dark Phoenix when it had taken over Jean Grey, corrupting her in X-Men Last Stand. Due to his healing factor, Logan was able to walk right up to Jean while everyone else was pretty much getting turned to dust around him. He pressed forward, struggling to reach her, and then used the awesome 
awesome power of his love for her to calm Dark Phoenix down enough for him to be able to kill her with his claws, bringing Jean back but also killing both her and the Phoenix. Really, really sad. That's some pretty powerful healing factor and some pretty powerful love factor as well. Number two, Governor General Howlett. The version of Wolverine from Earth 12025 is James Howlett. And he's not just a hero, but also holds the position of Governor General to the Queen of England for Canada. For those who might not be aware, the Governor General position in Canada acts as basically the, the go between for Canada and the Queen or the Crown. They act on behalf of the Crown, and a few other nations actually also have this position. Typically nations who were granted independence from the British, as opposed to having fought against the British to free themselves from British rule, have this position. James Howlett of Earth 12025 not only was known as Governor General, but he's also known for having an adamantine laced skeleton, which is actually different from adamantium, so if you thought I was saying that wrong. I'm not, it's a different thing. This instead is a mythical type of metal belonging to the gods. This grants James an extra layer of protection on both a mystical and godlike level, which means it's very hard to mess with James in any way. James also travels and adventures when he can with his romantic partner, Hercules, which means if you mess with him, you likely also have to fight Hercules as well. Both this number and number three actually both have the power of love. The power of love. Number one, Weapon Hex. Weapon Hex comes to us from Warp World, which was created by Gamora when she folded the universe in half. Doing so caused all the souls of that universe, of course, to merge together, as we talked about with Diamond Patch, creating combined beings such as Weapon Hex, who is a combination of both Laura Kinney's X23, aka Wolverine, and Scarlet Witch. She, as such, has the combined powers of both of these heroes, making her pretty OP, possibly even more OP than Amalgam's Dark Claw, though she doesn't have quite as much plot armor, most likely. Then again, with those two power sets, she wouldn't really need plot armor. Number 10, Lord Logan. With What If crushing it on Disney Plus currently, we have to take a look at this insane version of Logan from What If Volume 2, Issue 24. What if Wolverine was Lord of the Vampires? I'm still Team Edward, I don't care. The main difference is of course that Wolverine has a lust for blood this time around. Other than that, his characteristics don't change too much. His healing factor prevents him from turning, so he takes it upon himself to sink his own teeth into Dracula. Guy's a badass, go over Big D himself. One of the craziest parts here is when Wolverine quickly turns into a werewolf, he tells Dracula he's a quick learner, and now we have a new Dracula, Lord Logan. With Dracula's blood in him now, he loses any sense of humanity, and he's even more aggressive after than Dracula was. He turns over the New Mutants, he turns over the Hellfire Club, the Freedom Force, the Morlocks, everybody is getting bit. Doctor Strange was able to cast a spell to keep the undead out of his sanctum, but Vampire Juggernaut figured out a way and subsequently broke his body in one punch before becoming a snack himself. It's a pretty epic time. It's like a bat versus a wolf for a bit. It's great. Go check it out. Number nine, Rancor. Making her first appearance in Guardians of the Galaxy issue 8 back in the early 90s, Rancor was born in the alternate reality of Earth 691 in the 30th century future of the Guardians. She was a fifth generation descendant of Wolverine, and she wasn't very heroic to say the least. She rules over a colony and apparently every descendant of the Wolverine family line followed the same dark path. On her 16th birthday, Rancor clawed her father's beating heart out of his chest. And then of course she became the next ruler and her first plan of attack was to enslave the entire human population. Happy birthday. Do you want a car? No, I want all the humans in the world. Thank you, give me. After the Guardians defeated her and destroyed her planet, she stole one of Wolverine's claws from the Shi'ar Museum and headed out for Earth. Now she alongside her lieutenants were captured and recruited by Doctor Doom, so Rancor helped Doom locate the Inhumans on the moon. She turned against Doom and was eventually rescued by the Guardians, but Doom had this pretty sweet weapon with him the whole time. But before we explain that weapon, if you want to go ahead and give us a thumbs up, those likes really do wonders for our channel. You're amazing. Thank you so much for your support. Now let's get right back to the list. Number 8, Roboclaw. James Gunn has brought the Guardians to life in such a unique and fun way, but back in those early issues, we meet a pretty terrifying version of Logan. Doctor Doom revealed that he had Wolverine's adamantium skeleton, and he had killed Logan at some point in the past, and then Doom transferred his own brain into the adamantium skeleton. So now he's like kind of like a, a robot version. It was pretty sweet. To see Rancor fight this Terminator version of her own family is pretty mind-bending. It's very entertaining. Rancor is using that same Wolverine claw that she found at the museum as a weapon, enforcing the fact that possessing a weapon means nothing thing without the ability to use it. She then stabs the doom skeleton right in the eye and that does the trick, followed by a little shock therapy. Number 7, 
Captain Logan. Coming from the Noir series, Earth 90214, Jim Logan was a detective, much like our 616 Logan, his past was also troubled. His partner was his half-brother named Dog Logan, who has the brains of a bed bug and the manners of a gutter rat. And that's in his words, not mine. His origins are a little bit messy when it comes to the noir verse, because in X-Men Noir, Mark of Cain, Wolverine's origins are that of a bootlegger whose past is never really touched on. All we know is that he's a former lover of Jean Grey and that he was the one who took out Scott Summers' left eye. But here in Wolverine Noir, he's a detective with a gritty Catholic past. Either way, the noir versions of Wolverine is quite dark, and although his claws aren't built in this time around, he still has them as a weapon of choice. Real Freddy Krueger style, I like it. Number six, Weapon X. One of the more extreme versions of Wolverine, Weapon X came from the Age of Apocalypse storyline, and the first time we meet him is in X-Men Alpha issue one. Weapon X was a member of the X-Men, only this time around Magneto is running the team. How lovely is that? He's great. One of the most notable differences between this Logan and others is that Weapon X is missing a hand. He had battled Cyclops, and although he lost it in the fight, Logan can still use claws on that arm. Now in this reality, Wolverine, sorry, Weapon X, was married to Jean Grey. So a little light in this warped reality. Love still exists out there, it's true. He later on became Weapon Omega, AKA the hair to apocalypse. So it's really not that great. There's love, but there's also evil stuff. Number five, Gorgon. I always forget that Gorgon was also Wolverine, but him being one of Norman Osborn's dark recruits and carrying the mantle would definitely make him one of the most powerful alternate versions of Wolverine around. Because Gorgon is a pretty powerful and deadly guy. Even if, as we learned during the Otherworld tournament in Ten of Swords, he isn't immune to the seduction of rock sirens. Gorgon is a masterful fighter and a powerful mutant who also has the ability to turn his opponents to stone, hence his name. Gorgon. He is a deadly force to be reckoned with, and I personally feel bad for all of the folks who have to challenge him whenever he's working security for the mutants of Krakoa. A lot of those people just are getting maimed left, right, and center. Ugh. Number four, Dokken. Dokken or Akihiro is a deadly member of the Wolverine family who spent his time as Wolverine when he was on the Dark Avengers. It was during this time that Dokken attempted to take the Muramasa blade for himself to boost his power. He planned on having it bonded to his skeleton and coating his claws in it. And he wanted it so he could basically go kill Romulus. Remember Romulus, everyone? Whatever happened with that? He was successful in bonding the Muramasa blade to his claws, but didn't get to hold on to that power permanently. He would go on to battle and defeat both Scar and the Punisher, in fact seemingly killing Frank Castle, who would then go on to become Franken Castle for a time. One of Dawkins' most powerful abilities is his pheromone control, which can allow him to alter his opponent's mood. This is actually how he won against Scar, using pheromones to calm Scar down, which caused him to then transform and transform in a way where he was just more chill. Number three, Laura Kinney. Despite not even being an exact clone of Logan, X-23 is still one of the most powerful versions of Wolverine around out there. She became Wolverine in the all new Wolverine series. Even today, it's more the mantle and look that Laura is known for, with both her and Logan currently using the same name, Wolverine, on Krakoa. So there are two Wolverines, technically, within the same continuity now. More recently, Wolverine was chosen to go on a mission in inside the vault, along with Darwin and the resurrected Sink. The three were brought in to do so because of their extraordinary abilities and the fact that Sink could, in effect, use both of their powers himself. As we saw in issues 18 and 19 of the 2019 X-Men series, time moves differently in the vault. And in the end, the mission ended up taking, for them, hundreds of years before they actually managed to complete it and get out. But despite aging, Laura did not slow down. Even in the old woman Laura future, where her cells were beginning to break down due to her being created originally from genetic engineering, Laura still proved to be a badass, using her last bit of time alive to defeat Doom and free the people of Latveria. Basically all around, X-23 is just like the best. She's so cool. Number two, Dark Claw. Dark Claw is a combination of Marvel's Wolverine and DC's Batman, hailing from the Amalgam Comics universe. So yeah, you know he's OP. He's not only got a powerful regenerative healing factor, but is a master fighter, martial artist, and detective who also happens to have super enhanced senses. Imagine a master detective who is also a master tracker. There is no crime or mystery that he could not solve. Dark Claw is also known for being hyper intelligent besides, so he's basically got the whole package. He's also super wealthy in this reality as well, so he's got money to back up his vigilante antics, helping him to acquire high level tech and giving him access to 
various different gadgets, as well as his own claw copter, which this character has in place of a Batmobile. If you're both Wolverine and Batman, does that mean you just have like unlimited plot armor? Because I feel like both of those characters can never die just because they're so popular. So I feel like Dark Claw would be pretty unstoppable. Number one, Old Man Phoenix. Obviously, one of the most powerful versions of Wolverine around has to be the one from the alternate future of King Thor, Earth 14412. Here, Wolverine goes on to become the Phoenix after seemingly dying along with everyone else on Earth at the hands of Loki. The Phoenix, however, chose him, and because of that, he lived again and was given an unimaginable amount of cosmic power. Logan mostly used this power to fend off villains, including Ultron and Loki, and to keep the Space Stone out of Loki's hands. Many years later, as Old Man Phoenix, he would team up with King Thor to protect the Earth from Doctor Doom, after it was given new life again. Doom in this reality was also immensely powerful, and although Logan could not be killed in battle, he chose to sacrifice himself to give Thor the power to defeat Doom, imbuing his hammer Mjolnir with the Phoenix Force. However, even after seemingly giving up his life here, he would still somehow end up being resurrected. Because Phoenix. 